Okay, so today we're going to talk about the dashboard development using Streamlit. Uh, so we, we, you guys have already are familiar with the Streamlit, right? You guys used it in week zero to develop and deploy your uh, week zero challenge. So how was your experience with Streamlit? Were you was it the first time you used it or have you used it before? Or can someone share an insight or their opinion on that? Okay, not so much. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Okay, Ajat, Ajat, can you, you can talk. Uh, yeah, during week zero, ah, good afternoon, guys. During week zero, when I used Hi. that was the first time. That would be the first time of me using it. Yeah, so that was the so first time. Yeah, that, for most of us, I think it's. Not, yeah, for most of yeah, us, I think it's, it's the first time. Yeah. Sorry. So have you used other uh, development tools uh, before or? Just keep my dashboard. Mm, no. Dashboard tool? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, aside from Power BI, no. I've, I've not used anyone, any, anyone else. Okay, so anyone else? Uh, maybe someone that may compare Streamlit with other development tools. Oh, no one, I'm guessing. It's okay. Uh, I think Tina Academy introduced me to Streamlit, so I understand. But come on, I'm sure someone out there have used it. Okay, okay, it was my first time, but it seemed a bit confusing at first, but it's easier to... Okay, is that a hand? Did I see a hand raise or... Okay, never mind. So, oh, so you thought it was confusing. Okay, so this is the first actually. So uh, when most of the people that are used to working with Python, with Python uh, starts using Streamlit, they usually think it's easier because the other tools that maybe, yeah, so the, yeah, the other tools are maybe using different language, pro different programming language. I mean, so, but in Streamlit, you can just use Python and you can just design a dashboard the same way you create a script or you create a function. So I think Streamlit, uh, I've seen that most people have found it easier to use. So uh, we'll be talking about that today. Uh, there's also Flask. You can also use Flask. But uh, to, for this per tutorial session, we're just going to focus on Streamlit. So you guys, uh, so if you guys used Streamlit last week, I mean week zero, then maybe you can still work on Streamlit, but you can uh, maybe challenge yourself and learn new tool and start working with Flask, depending, so that depends on you, uh, on your preference. So when uh, on 10 Academy, in 10 Academy, I've, what I found useful is that when you are working on a weekly project, uh, so try to learn new tools every week. So I know there is a lot of things to learn. It, every concept is might be new for you guys. and. Learning that by itself is hard and it takes time, but uh, what I found useful is that, which I learned in the, later on the weeks, was that every week try to learn some tool, not not the concepts, not the technical aspect of it, but some tool. So that could be a DevOps tool, that can be an MLOps tool. So when, uh, whatever it is, just so it could be maybe this week could be trying to use Streamlit and if we are going to develop a dashboard next week, maybe use Flask or, you know, 
well, and the sec and the third week maybe introduce uh, Docker to your development process or whatever, you know. So al always challenge yourself to learn new tools. So that is one uh, advice I give to you guys. So uh, let me just start this, this session. So uh, today we're going to talk about design thinking and what is design thinking. Uh, so design thinking is a design methodology that provides a solution-based approach to solving a problem. So when whenever you're working on a project or a problem that you, um, as a machine learning engineer or as a data engineer or as a data scientist, you, you always have to engage with the users. So there's there's always someone that uses your product. So when you are working on this product and when you are working on solving this product, you you have to always have that, uh, you have to always have users in mind. So when you are building something, so always have in mind that someone else is going to use it and make it easy for the others to use. And so to have that user or to have that human involvement a, a core thinking so always start with your projects or your so uh, the problems you're solving and amplify it by uh having users at the end so when there's always some client or some stakeholders that are going to need your need you to visualize or to deploy or to interact with the uh, product that you have built on so design thinking is just a methodology that provides solutions. The solution could be a machine, a model, or it could be a, an insight that you found from some data using your applying some data analysis techniques or data evaluation. So having this solution, it provides a solution-based approach to a problem, so a solving problems. So solving these problems and solving them in a more uh, creative thinking way. So there are five steps in our stage in design thinking, which is emphasized. So when the first thing, as I said, is emphasizing is that any project or almost every project that you're building always have a human or someone using that. So understand that the human needs involved. So who, whoever is involved, just try to optimize the problem or the solution yet that you have found and try to use that to to show that to the other humans. So and the second one is defining. So defining is reframing uh, the problem in a human-centric way. So uh, you have a problem and you have you followed some steps to create a solution. So when you're defining the problem and when you're defining the solution, then so and that solution needs to be defined in a human-centric way, like I said. So uh, the third one is ideate. It's create many ideas. So create as much ideas as possible to engage in dif to different users. So some users, so the sales team might need different uh, visualization or the stakeholders might need different visualizations. So you always have to have different ideas to design your problems or your solutions. And so the third or the fourth one is prototype, which is having a hands-on approach in creating your solution. So having different prototypes is always uh, best when you are trying to develop a, a solution to a problem or when you are trying to solve so the, third, the fifth one is, of course, testing. So before deploying and even after deploying, uh, create a, a testable prototype solutions to a problem. So always have this in mind when we're designing. Usually when as a developer or as an engineer, we focus on the development and we don't have much time on the test. So uh, this uh, last stage tend to be overlooked. So like I said, uh, there are five steps and this is a very iterative step. Um, 
so when you're defining a solution or when you're defining a problem you then you have to emphasize on the problem so just think about the people that are involved and when you are creating ideas and when you are creating prototypes you have to learn from the prototypes if you need to improve your ideas or if you need to add, to add more ideas to your prototype so the, it's always an iterating prototype so even after you test then you may us you may need to learn a lot about the users throughout the testing so if you find new insights then you might need to go back and start working on the first stage so it's always an iterating process so what what do we mean by designing for the user so a user-based design provides a structure that is easy to use so when you have users or humans as we say involved when you are providing a solution then it's always have it always have to be easy to use and it has to be effective for the users so based on needs on, and based on the goals of the users so uh, when you have designed for the users then you need to show how it works so when you are developing your dashboard then it's always best to have and to add some ex explanation or text to to your uh, dashboard so you might have a button that might be confusing so it, you always you can amplify that or you can improve that by adding some explanation text or or something that can be helpful and have some example in, of inputs so when you have a field that an input and an, an input field then maybe have some default input data for example if your uh, dashboard has some name or email or something as an input that requires users to you to input or to add then maybe have a default data or a, a default input so that it is easier for the users to understand and when uh, show this this all things need to be at a minimum amount so you don't have to use a lot of information when you're creating your dashboard just you can have different ways of implementing this information for example you can use tooltips or expanders just always less is more so when you're designing just have this in mind and these are pointers that are used and that are very effective so so uh what is appealing design so using layouts and designs design option can make um make a visually appealing design to create a great experience for the users so having different uh designs that are appealing that maybe some some uh graphs some some charts anything that can visualize your uh, findings or your projects is always better than having a text or anything that are going to be uh, that are going to be less engaging for the users so using different layouts and designs option can make your dashboard uh, more engaging to users and it can be uh, more appealing to the users so when you're designing uh, just try to use different layouts so this helps to create a proportional distribution so when you are designing just maybe you might use different horizontal uh, ver flow or vertical flow so when you're just having the same approach or the same layout is always better and choose a color or theme that in a very wise way so when you're designing you your dashboard so there are three things that you need to have in mind when you're choosing a theme or a color right so you might have one uh, primary color that and then you have another secondary color that is going to complement the primary color so don't have uh, like a lot of uh, colors that are fighting with each other and it's going to make the user less interested or less engaged with your dashboard so uh, you can also use different uh, typographics or different fonts or different size of text when you're building so if you want if you're designing a, uh, a dashboard that has maybe if 
when you're working on the dashboard, it just use text sizing to emphasize on which which are important and which are less important and which are descriptive and which are uh, the main uh, point of the point, the main point that you are trying to uh, send to the users. And I'll always make it fun, uh, you know, make it, as I said, humans are very visual. So use different visualizations, use different uh, beautiful logos, different badges. Oh, we have emojis here. I'm not sure about that, but depends on what you're working on. So, uh, so like I said, we're going to talk about using Streamlit to build your app. And uh, so to, we are going to have some code uh, that is going to help you on building your dashboard and using Streamlit to build an app that displays data and prompt users to fill in some data. So this week, uh, you need to show you your findings using the dashboard, right? So we're going to show you how to display the data and to pass some values or you, your findings. So you might have different charts or graphs. So you might need to, depending on your use case, you might need to display some of the insights you found. So we're going to sh look at uh, ways to, to visualize our, uh, our data and using our streamlets and you, we can use different ways to display this information. So dockerization, why uh, I think, uh, so a week zero, you guys were supposed to have a docker hands-on uh, tutorial, but due to some time constraints, it was postponed. So you guys will have a docker uh, tutorial tomorrow. So this is just, I'm just going to show you some things that will help you for tomorrow's session. So when you are deploying uh, or when, when you are working on building a, an app or a, a web app, using Docker helps a lot. So it provides a reproducible way of uh, using your scripts or running your code smoothly. So in different operating systems. So that could be if you're using uh, I don't know Windows and if I, if the other person wants to to want to use or to implement your app on Ubuntu, then you don't need to have all the uh, installment needed. So you can just have Docker that always is always makes your work easy. So it provides a nice solution or containers that are not affected by the other applications that may run that may run also on the same underlying operating system so it's we usually have issues when if we design our project or work on ubuntu and if, when we're trying to migrate on windows you might have issues so having docker always solves a problem for us and so oh the other thing that can optimize our work is packaging so when you're transforming your code into a packaging is when you're transforming your code into a, path, a file that others can easily uh, install on their machine. So having a pip installable file is what we mean by Python package. So this allows anyone to pip install your work. So packaging your work transforms your code into a Python package. So uh, this is achieved by creating the setup.py scripts. So we are also going to look at that. And this file tells pip what your package need for it, for it to be installed. So if maybe if you guys are uh, familiar with web development, then this is basically like npm package. So creating your npm package and creating it, making it installable for others to use. So this setup tool library is used in package okay the setup tool library is used in packaging okay so deployment so um so deployment is the integration of our work into an existing production production environment so uh, when we're developing or when you're deploying your machine learning model it means that you are taking it 
it can take an input and it can take and it can take this input, process that input and return an output. So it makes it in, engaging for the users or it makes it uh, ac accessible to the users. So there are different steps to deploy a stream, uh, your streamlet app to Heroku. You can run your, so we'll take, we'll take a look at this more hands on using your code, but you can, the general uh, steps are you can run your app locally and then you can, after you, it has successfully run, then after you have pushed your files to your repo, then you can create uh, the requirements that shows the different libraries or or libraries that you've used and you after you create the setup.sh file and you just connect that to your Heroku using the dashboard or the Heroku CLI. So there are different references here to show you or to, to clarify what this presentation has been. Uh, if you want to take a deeper look, I suggest taking this references a look. And so this is the first part of my presentation. If you have any question, uh, maybe. So let's see if you guys have any question. Okay, Wangui, uh, I'm going to stop my recording just to share my code editor. Um, my question was actually on the <clears throat> on the presentation that you did. You mentioned um, for Streamlit to have uh, a proc file. I just wanted to know what that was. Uh, a what file? Um, in the steps for uh, the, I think it was one of the last slides for for Streamlit. Question. Can you, can you repeat your question? So you asked about something on the last slide, but I did not get what, the, what that um, was. The one, okay, there's, I think it's the second last one because it's not the one with the references. The, um, there was a proc file. I, I'm not sure what that is. Um, oh, a proc file. Yes. Okay, so when, you, when you're deploying, uh, that is going to specify the commands that are going to be used. So when, uh, so this is going to be used by Heroku on startup. So it's just going, it's just a command that is executed by Heroku. Oh, okay. On, on the start, when you start the app. Okay, thank you. It may not be necessary, but for deployment, uh, it allows you to set up the configuration. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if you're using different, so if you're using the Streamlit cloud, you may not need it. This is just for the Heroku deployment. Okay, uh, okay um, does, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay, good. So, uh, who's Amanuel? What's okay. your question? Uh, can you say a bit about the uh, how to store secrets like uh, passwords, database passwords uh, while using Streamlit? How can we do that? So when you're trying to deploy or when you're trying to connect with the database and everything, is that your question? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I actually have not done that with Streamlit, but I assume you can maybe create an environment where you can store this uh, secret keys or, yeah, so secret keys or different uh, URLs if you're using a database name or maybe you can hide that in an environment file. So I think it, it's the same in Streamlit. I haven't done so in Streamlit, but 
I assume it's the same. So yeah, I think someone said that in the chat and also you can use those in files. Okay. Oh, when I said environment, I mean dot in files. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, do we have another question? Yes, Margaret. Um, does your code need to be um, fully working for you to create a dashboard? Uh, excuse me? Uh, does your code need to be working for? Um, for you to, for your data to be displayed on the dashboard. Uh, what do you mean? If, uh, your code has to execute, so I'm sure you don't need to have errors. I, I'm, or I don't get your question. So to display a data on your dashboard, right? Yeah. Uh, can you maybe clarify that? Um, when you're building a dashboard, mm -hmm. um, does your code, does all of your code need to have passed all the user tests for it, for data to actually visualize well? Okay, if so it, when you're working on string, uh, if you're displaying your data or if showing your data is the first thing, I've, I've had that problem before that it shows my data in some part of the code and and then I have other problems when I'm trying to visualize it or showing it. So that part, the code fails, but it seemed to work when I displayed the data. So I've had that problem before, but I don't think it matters. So the whole thing might not work for you, but some part of the dashboard can be uh, displayed successfully, I think, yeah. Okay, so Johannes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, is there any difference between uh, system thinking and uh, design thinking? If it is different, uh, can we use the system thinking or, or design thinking uh, simultaneously or can we can use uh, both uh, in uh, mutual exclusive? Thank you. Uh, okay, I think system thinking uh, considers several uh, several things. So it could be from the financial side or from the I don't, from the performance side. So uh, when you are thinking about system thinking or when you are working with system thinking, then it concentrates on a lot of things, but on design thinking, it more it's more uh, narrow, as I said. It mainly concerns on the users. So uh, you may have few number of users, and you you it usually makes it narrow. So I think system the design thinking is uh, a smaller version of system thinking. So does that make sense? Thank you. Okay. So you just when your uh, when your process is design thinking, you just specify that to your users' need or, uh, that you don't have different things to consider or different aspect of it. So I that think we, that's, that we can okay. we can consider uh, on the system thinking uh, the also design thinking. Yes. Uh huh. On the system thinking, you can also consider uh, design thinking. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, any other question?
So I see there is a question on chat. Mathail, you asked. Okay, I guess the question is from Mikhail. Okay, maybe you guys could discuss that. Okay. So I'm going to share my VS Code now. Okay, yeah, Jet, is that a question? Go ahead, you can ask. My question is actually about, about Streamly because I am not, uh, not very conversant with it, though the very few times I use it, it seems it is easy. But there is this case of using Streamly with some database and connecting them together. And I don't quite get how to make that kind of pipeline that generates database. And then you have your dashboard, you have your dashboard file where we stream this and you have stream this, you put it on stream this that pull data from the database or something. That's still quite unclear. Uh, so when you're, the question is for uh, connecting databases to your stream rate, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I think it's my connection, in, I, it's breaking up a little. That was my question. Yes, that was. Oh, my okay. Question. Okay, I thought you were gonna have more discussion to the question. So, uh, okay, so when you're connecting your database to the uh, string that's once, for example, if you're working on your working on MySQL, and if you have when you're working on connecting that MySQL to your string that's, then you have to run your uh, SQL server, and you have to connect it with. You you have to use different uh, libraries like for example my school client is going to help you connect that your uh, database to your streamlet so you can use different libraries you can use this library and connect it use that in your code there are different ways so just it's just an, a small code you add in your code to connect to your database i don't think it's any different from any other uh, development libraries you just add your database connection and add functions or queries that can access your database and just display that or use that your database and uh to show that in your table so uh you might like someone in the asked before you might have the uh, concern of storing your password or username or different IP or URLs, URLs, but you can use different ways to hide or uh, to hide the secrets in your file, in your project. So it's just a normal way of connecting with your dashboard or you, I mean your database, sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll try that. Uh, if okay. I have issues, that I'll, I'll ask them. Back. Okay, of course. So if you have worked on dashboard development before, and if you have connected your database to your dashboard, then I don't think it's any different. You're just, in this case, it's even easier. You can just use your Python script or just write some function that, that is going to connect your, with your uh, database, or you can create a schema. Then, you can work with that. Okay, I think that's that's your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.
Okay, Judy, I got a question. Yeah, I wanted to ask if is it possible to bind Streamlit uh, with the uh, web applications or mobile applications? Uh, with uh, Streamlit, I think it's used for web app. I don't think it's used for mobile applications. I'm not sure on that, but it's mainly used for web app, web, web development purpose. Yeah, so if you have a, a design web application, you can still use it on different pages on web applications. Yes. Oh. Okay. So if you want uh, to have a mobile development, I think you have to use different ways to create your dashboard or to create your app. OK. OK, so, um, so I'm using Ubuntu. So uh, I've, I know that you guys had a tutorial session on how to install and use Tremlet. Right, can anyone confirm? I'm sure most of you by now have it's installed locally and everything for Windows users and all. For, but for Ubuntu users, all you need to do is just to install Streamlit and it's going to install your Streamlit for you. I've already have it on my machine, so but all you need to do is just click install your Streamlit. Right. So uh, you just, uh, so you start by importing Streamlit in your file. And what I love about uh, using Streamlit is that it's just all, it's just like what I, what you used for your data visualization or data analysis process. You just create the same functions that are going to display your, uh, so that are going to display your, your data in your Streamlit file or in your dashboard. So I'm just going to, I have this uh, sample code. I can show you in the field. I'm just going to, let me just first run this. So to to write or to run your Streamlit app, then you just you just write Streamlit. I realize talking and typing at the same time is actually diff difficult. Streamlit. So this is going to run this app for me. Okay. So I realize that you guys cannot see the whole screen, so I have to stop presenting and navigate back to the browser. So this is uh, this is going to be the output of the code I'm going to be showing you. It's going to display the sample data. This is just a thousand rows of the data that that is going to be displayed uh, from our cleaned data. So I've used the I've used the cleaned data that. Uh, okay, so so this is going to be how I what today we're going to be building this. So this is just showing. So you might have different reasons for creating this dashboard. Uh, so to show your uh, business objective or business idea, this is just to show to get you guys started on working on your dashboard. So don't think that this is what you guys need to display. This is just any, it's just the daily data that I'm going to 
be displaying on my dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the, the, the clean data frame and I'm going to load the app data. This is the number of uh, apps that are used most mostly in our in our uh, cleaned data frame. So which data has a large number of traffic and different if it's like so if it's like YouTube and how many traffic it has, if it's gaming, how many traffic it has, this is just, you might need, you might have reasons to be displaying this. So uh, it's just, just to show you how you can display that. And you can have different visualizations that you can display. So I've seen the question previously and how I can, someone asked how you guys can display visualization on your dashboard or your charts or or whatever, or your, it could be your pie chart or whatever. But here, I just used the same function that I I used in my code or the same uh, script file that is just to display this. The thing about Streamlit is that it lets you use the same code in your that you used in your EDA or 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 when you are using your when you're trying to clean your data. So. It's just the same Python function that you need to write, or you can also embed this, uh, the screenshot of this uh, chart in your dashboard, just import it as an image and it will be displayed for you. But this one is just a function. So I'm going to show you how this was displayed. This is just a matrix to show that the top users and the frequency. So I'm sure you have this data by now or you might not. So when let's just stop present I can't hear you. I've been mute this whole time. Oh my God, okay, sorry. Oh my God, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I don't know which parts I've, I've been mute. So I'm just going to start over. So you start by importing your uh, streamlets and the functions. So, yes. Is that a question? Actually, I was going to tell you where you uh, was muted. You were showing us how you okay. uh, how you put uh, the backlot in the uh, in this uh, you are in this upload QI five, I think. Okay, okay. I'm just going to. Okay, thank you for that, Hassan. So you start by uh, importing and. Have you heard me when I was talking about the the scripts? Maybe not. Okay. So uh, what I did is that when you're working on your stream file, you can optimize this. This here in this code it doesn't use the script or it doesn't use the Mojave code that I functions that I wrote for the other functions. For example, when I was working on the idea, I, when I was creating the histograms, then I used this function. So 
but you can also use this in your dashboard when you're creating uh, your charts or when you're trying to display or if you have other code that you need to reuse you can modularize it here and so here i don't use the functions that were created because this code is that one. so uh so ac do title is going to create a title for you project and here I just loaded my data that I want to display. So I showed you guys that I, I displayed some uh, thousand rows of the clean data so for the future use. So here I, I loaded my data. So what I display is that the first thing I display is here after the type the title is that I displayed the clean data. You've seen some rows of data that I displayed in your in my dashboard. So what this does is it's going to, so this is a header for the clean data. So to create uh, just, it's very easy to use a Stringlet that what I found is easy is that you can just, it has different uh, or easy ways of uh, displaying the titles or just, it's, all, it's always easy to, you don't need just like scripts or you don't need different tags, it's just, just a simple command to display your header title and input your data to display your data. And it always makes it easier for you. So uh, when you're working on machine learning projects then you usually work, almost always work with Python. So just having that easy use of the language that you use and to create your dashboard is what makes Stringlet powerful, I think. So, so here I created, uh, so you can use this script or this command to create a header and this is going to write the data. So what this does is it's going to show the data. So I've showed the reason I showed you guys uh, the dashboard before is that so you guys realize what I'm going to talk about. So this goes, I, I want you guys to have the dashboard in mind when I'm walking through when I'm walking you guys through the code. So um, so it's going to show the loaded data. So it's going to show the data here. I'm, I'm going to write the data to the dashboard. And then I'm going to have this other subheader that shows the app, app data. So what, what this shows is that it shows this application data, so, so it shows the, uh, the apps used by users frequently. So in a sending folder, so I have a function to show to display that. So I so just create a function to load your data and to just you just call this data. You, you could just call this function. So it's going to return an app. So I'm I'm just going to write that in my dashboard using write app. So you're going to display what's returned by your function. So here is just, so if you've seen the markdown button, this is how you create a markdown button. You just write this command and you give it just an HTML tag that's going to, um, it's going to style your markdown section and you're going to have a break. This is just a normal HTML tag. If you guys are familiar, it's going. It's, it's a paragraph that shows section break. So there is a set. A, there is a part in my dashboard that shows section break, and this is just a style, the color, and the background. So this is how you, you can you guys can use and or you guys can embed HTML tags in your uh, in your command. So another title here it just creates here is just uh, let me just be sure the so so this is what I meant so for you guys. 
sorry, my computer does not allow me to share the whole screen. That's why I'm navigating between the the apps. So this is what I meant by the one with the uh, HTML tags, then the one with the uh, the style embedded into the code. So you can this whole thing is just a default display method, but here you can. Maybe use different image. You can add different, even videos, or to show your visualization. If you have your visualizations in video formats, you can use different HTML uh, tags to display that for you guys. So yeah, uh, and then I sh here it's going to. So this is going to be displaying the. So this is going to be displaying the, the visual uh, effects that I showed you guys, the charts. So what this does is it's going to call the bar chart uh, function, which is this one. Oh, so yeah, so uh, I'm sure you guys used this uh, function to create or to display your data in your EDA file when you are exploring your data. So what this is that what this does is going to use the MSI number and the session duration to display a chart, and it's going to give it a title of this one. So so this makes it stream. It's very easy. You just create a simple function and you give it some commands to execute, and you guys have uh, some visuals to display. So you don't need other language to to navigate or to display your work. So yeah, I guess that's mostly what the dashboard displays for now. And you guys can customize this or you guys can have your own implementation of your dashboard. So be creative and play, just play around with your dashboard. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's how you create a uh, a dashboard using Streamlit. Okay, yes, a question? Yeah, uh, I think that we had a question about how to create new pages, but you said that we also to that the don't think that to be how to create new pages. How to create new pages? Yeah. Oh, okay. So here, uh, what what I did is that I just created one page, which is app.py file, but you can have different uh, pages so to navigate through your, uh, your page. So, so you have this main page. It could be a page, app.py, or you can have main.py, whatever you call it. So you, ha uh, you have other, you create other uh, pages and so if I just if I just want to have different pages or to have a navigation bar that's going to be that's going to display different pages, then I create different pages and I embed that or I I import those pages in my main page. So that's you just you can have multiple pages in to display on your dashboard. Yes, but uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I can right. show you the presentation. Okay. Yes. 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 Are you talking? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I say that. Uh, I would like you to share the presentation with us and then we can see how we can do it physically because you said that we can do it. Yes, we know that we can do it, but we are asking about how to do it in practice. Hello? Yes, yes. I will share you the code, but yeah, okay. 
Actually, Nadus, I think your screen is not being shared. I think that's what they're trying to communicate. That the screen is not in presentation mode. Oh, okay. Is that the question? I was. I thought I was. He was asking about how I can add or create multiple pages. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the miscommunication. So uh, I've actually closed. Let me just op reopen that, and I'll show you how what I'm talking about. Okay, I think you can see my screen now. Yes, it's not visible. Okay. So uh, you can have different uh, sections or pages in your effort to show. So let me just take some. So let, for example, if you have, if you want to create a home page, or you, you can just. Post, I don't know, data page. Or just to show the overview, I was create. I was trying to show the overview. So and if you guys want to create. So this is just as easy as creating a, a simple Python page, or Python five. Okay, so so here we have pages. So this is going to be the component, or you're going to be injecting your new main file. So this is my main file I showed you earlier. So if I create a different uh, pages, or if this is just you can this you can assume that it's I know it's a normal Python file, but you can assume that it is a streamlit file. And what you need just what all you need to do is here import so import streamlit. So and uh, uh, import the and. And create some function. Let's say, what is this? This is home page. Uh, if this function, I don't know, displays something here and it returns, uh, I don't know, something. Home. And yeah, this is just so you write uh, a simple Python, Python file. It's, I know it's confusing when, when you have the uh, traditional or the usual dashboard development uh, ideas. So you just, this is a home file, right? So if you want to, so I will just import this in my, I've already done that. Or you can just import it in your main file. You guys can hear me, right? Okay. In your main file and you just have another page. So you can create navigation bar, or you, you can create ST sidebar somewhere. Uh, okay. uh, Nadis? Yes. I think there's a, there's a file on the folder that was shared with them yeah. that simply just have this, it has this multi app already oh, done. So maybe you could just explain with that. They, they so, already yeah, have I've... the file. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the file. It's uh, I, it shows the a dummy app. It shows a full. full. Oh, okay. and everything. I just wanted for them to see that they use the data used in the in the previous tasks and to show to display that in the dashboard. 
So yeah, the force of uh, the really different force shared in the in the romance, in the right, right? That's what you're talking about. The yes. up, right? And the up that I think the up one is the one that combines the pages. So just a way to combine everything. Uh, the questions that they're asking. So yeah, this one, right? You were, you were talking about this one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is, it's kind of like uh, the same as the one I was trying to, to show you guys. So what this does is it's it imports the same file. So we have another file. If you guys add this in your code and if you guys have like different uh, streamed pages or files, this is one file so it's just uh, it displays some uh it displays some uh oh yeah it shows the title and sh it has different uh sections and where you have different parameters uh, parameters and that displays uh, it has some navigations okay so so this you can consider this as a one page the one just the one like i created the home page so i didn't write any code in it but you guys can use this and so to inject it in your main app you can just uh you can start with this command and what this does is going to have that page that you created before the monthly app page and show show that in your in this main page so this is the main page in your file so to have different uh sidebars like it's using the different pages then you can create the command sidebar and you can it can you can use your pages here and so you guys can take a look at this and sorry i just looked at the time and sorry i was not able to show you running this code but uh, let me just share this five. So you guys can follow along this code and take a look at what's uh, having multiple pages and using that in your main file and yeah. Okay, I guess the time is, I've run past the time, so sorry, and if you have any question, you can ask. Okay, Brahan, is that a question? Is that a question? Yeah, the, yeah, the question. Uh, if uh, uh, in the week week zero challenge, I also I try to build the Instagram link, but uh, I, I face some challenges. Uh, when I deploy the Instagram uh, application, it's it needs uh, I work on my code on the code environment and uh, code environment, but when I install on the Instagram uh, cloud, it's run on the Python environment. So is there a way to fix this one? I try to fix it or browse or asking someone. Uh, still, I didn't fix that. If the way or um, some method there, can you tell me? Yeah, I think you can dockerize your file and maybe you can try with that. I think it's going to solve that issue for you. So you can try using Docker. You, if you dockerize your app and if you try to, to deploy that in Streamlit, Cloud, I think it's going to work fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I've had that issue before and that's how I was able to solve it.
if we if that's the same issue that we we're talking about okay do we have another question okay if you guys are confused and if, if this session seemed too vague for you uh, you can just take a look at the code it's very easy to understand and you can take up you can just look at the commands and the scripts it's just it's going to be easy to understand so I may have made it a little bit complicated with my presentation. Okay, so I don't have any question. So I guess that's the end of this session. Thank you guys, thank you for coming.